Hi, I'm Ken Lanfear from FM 106.5, along with PGA Golf Pro Woody Capron at the beautiful Hickory Ridge Golf Course, located between Comstock and Galesburg. We hope you've had an opportunity to check out Lanfear's lessons, my lessons with Woody, on the finer points of the game of golf. Now it's time for me to take to the course and put some of those lessons into practice, and we're going to do that on the signature hole of this beautiful Hickory Ridge course, the 229 nine yard par four picturesque hole number nine. What we're gonna do today is try to play a golf hole and explain how to play the hole. There's certain ways that you play golf courses. You're not there to play the opponent, you're there to play the golf course. And so the score does count and it does matter a lot. However, you still have to have some kind of strategy while you're playing. And that's what we're going to discuss today. We're playing number nine, which is a par four. It's a fairly short par four because it's only 229 yards on the blue course. This is an elevated tee, which means that we're standing higher than where the green is. And this is, this is quite a bit higher. What we're going to do is just try to get the ball to go out. And as it goes out, it's going to carry no matter what because it's all downhill. Being the signature hole, a lot of people love this hole because of the elevation change and the drop in, in the elevation is what makes the hole good. You'll hit a, a shot that is probably not a great shot, but it's still going to go down the hill, so you, uh, you still get the distance out of the shot. You should be able to get the ball on in two, and then hopefully you're putting for a birdie, and then you make par. That's our goal today. Okay, when, when teeing the ball up, you, there's a little area that you're supposed to tee it up in. You, you can tee it between the markers, up to two club links back, and there's a little box there. So you want to draw a box behind the markers up to two club lengths. You can never tee off in front of the markers. So between them or up to two club lengths back and back of the markers. But no more than two club lengths. That's, that's the rule as far as the USGA is concerned. And I'm going to hit a three iron only because of the elevation is going to allow my ball to go a little farther in. We're a little downwind today. So I'd rather be a little short of the green than a little past the green. Ken hit his drive a little bit to the right on this hole, so there's some trees, but we're not in the trees, and we've got a perfect shot wide open to the green. So he's going to take a little pitching wedge, and we're going to take a three-quarter swing and see if we can't get that ball on or near the green. If we happen to hit it over or short, we'll, we'll chip from there, but we might be able to get this on the green easily with a pitching wedge. Okay, don't move. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. That wasn't exactly the way I planned it, but it was the right club. <laughs> so guess what? He's putting for birdie. We're on the green. <laughs> okay, we let Ken hit another ball up on the tee, and he hit it pin high, but he's got a little trouble on this one. There's a weeping willow in between him and the green. Our goal is to try to hit the ball under the willow and roll it up onto the green. So we're going to take a, a, a less lofted club, maybe a, a six iron or a seven iron and we're gonna chip the ball and run it through the, the area between us and the, and the green. You know, that was a good shot. The other alternative is to try to go over the willow. Some people can hit the ball straight up in the air. What you're gonna do is take a more lofted club, like a sand wedge or a 60 degree wedge, and you hit behind the ball about an inch. You have to follow through, you can't just stop the club. So you're gonna take almost a full swing, hit behind the ball, you're not trying to overpower the ball, you're just trying to hit it up in the air and over the willow and onto the green. And that's what I'm going to try right now. I ended up a little short of the green, but right at the pin. So if I'd ate my Wheaties this morning, I probably would have got there. But I've got to hit a little chip shot. And if you remember in our chipping segment, you're using your shoulders, you're rocking your shoulders back and through, pendulum swing, open the stance a little bit, distance of swing determines how far the ball goes. I've got my shot close to the pin, however, it's not my turn to putt. The furthest person away putts first, and then, and so on. So um, if Ken happens to make this putt, then I'll putt next. If he happens to hit it further away than my ball, then he would have to putt again before I putt. So I'm gonna take my marker, and I'm gonna place it behind the ball between me and the hole. And then I pick up my ball. If you look at this putt, this putt's probably gonna break to the left just a little bit. It's a little downhill, so you don't have to hit it real hard. But again, in our putting uh, sequence, 
Ken's gonna go ahead and walk it off and he's gonna figure out how many inches he needs to make that ball get close. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, he's downhill a little bit, so we, we subtract. So maybe a five or six inch stroke out to the right of the hole a little bit and he ought to get that closer, maybe make it. Oh. Boy, I'll tell you, I didn't expect that. The pressure's on. I have to make this putt to tie Ken or I'll never hear the end of it. So here we go. Oh, oh nice job. Congratulations. Well, so we put Lanfear's lessons to the test here on the scenic ninth hole here on the blue course at Hickory Ridge Golf Course. And I got my birdie and Woody got his birdie and, and life is good.